Hello, my name is Scott Corson. I'm a senior staff software architect with GE Healthcare in the General Imaging Ultrasound Group. Today, I will talk to you about working with CUTE in a regulated industry. The agenda is I will give a short overview of GE Healthcare's product line, describe the regulated environment we work in, how we in GI Ultrasound are using CUTE, and why Qt is a good choice for our software. If you have questions, please enter them in the chat during the presentation. GE Healthcare has a wide range of products in many care areas. In fact, the products shown here are only a small sample of our portfolio. Besides diagnostic imaging devices using CT, MRI, X-ray, and of course, ultrasound, we offer anesthesia products, ventilators, patient monitors, and ECG devices, along with the digital solutions that complement them. We also have pharmaceutical agents that enhance contrast during, during many types of imaging scans, as well as molecular imaging agents that help during SPECT and PT scans. The impact of our work is seen in these statistics. Over 300,000 patients daily use imaging agents from GE. Over 4 million devices are used worldwide. And 2 billion plus scans are managed by GE technology every year. Like all product development teams in any industry, we face challenges every day, but these figures motivate us to come to work and provide our best efforts. So what does the development in a regulated industry look like? I cannot hope to convey all of the issues surrounding this in such a short talk, so I will stick to the basics. In the US, the Food and Drug Administration regulates all medical devices. The law itself breaks down into the Code of Federal Regulations. Many other countries and regions have regulatory agencies. Europe has the European Medicines Agency, China has the National Medic Products Administration, and so forth. For brevity, I will use the FDA terms for the rest of the talk. But keep in mind that these are there are similar regulations all throughout the world. While the individual agency rules may differ, the core principle is to ensure that manufacturers produce safe and effective products under the intended conditions of use. In simple terms, this means do no harm and help diagnose or treat the condition. The regulations applied depend on the type of product being offered in terms of risk, intended use, and the indications for use. Indications are things such as labeling or verbal communications from the manufacturer. Some examples of class one, two, and three devices are given. In class one, it would be something like a fitness app on your smartphone. It has a low amount of risk and the lowest amount of regulation. Class two would be something like ultrasound. Class three is a little riskier, something like computed tomography or CT due to the extra radiation. Classification of these devices depends on the requirements for each class. And of course, there are exceptions to these rules. The quality system regulations lead us to use the following tools and techniques. Design controls, it gives structure to the design documents all the way from requirements to implementation. Risk management and FMEA are used to assure safety. The DHF documents all aspects of the design and is kept for the entire life cycle of the product which can be many years. 
The DMR includes all instructions and drawings used to manufacture the device. The DHR is a per unit record of the device's adherence to the specifications. And auditing is used by regulating agencies to make sure that companies are in compliance. The testing regime revolves around verification and validation. This is often phrased as, did you make the right thing versus did you make the thing right? Validation is our indication that the customer will see real clinical benefit. Verification is our assurance that we met our own requirements. All of this testing requires observable evidence. This means that it must be unambiguous and verifiable by a third party. So think the temperature monitor read 55 degrees Celsius and not the system was hot. As you can see, the development environment is complex and has quite a few more steps than a typical software environment. So here at General Imaging Ultrasound, we have a series of scanners based on the Logic E10. The system itself has a upper monitor that shows the images and a lower monitor that is a touchscreen device. The user will enter various actions that are desired on the touch panel and the, the front panel controls in order to affect the proper scan setup. Focusing on the touch screen, we have four different screen captures here with the scanner in different contexts. The upper two are for 2D and 3D, 4D scanning purposes, and the bottom two are for measurements and entering comments. Currently, we're using Qt to re-implement these touch panel menus. As you can see, the layout of the menu, the function of the buttons, and the size of them are all different for each of the different contexts the scanner can be in. In order to implement this, we're using an abstract model-driven approach, and it allows for easy changes between these contexts. This is a very powerful part of Qt. Qt gives us flexibility with its powerful composability, that is, building up complex UI structures from primitive elements. The QML given here, of course, is really just a condensed version of the actual 18 QML files that are used. So perhaps it would be easier to understand as a diagram. Through the use of repeaters, uh, columns and row structures, stack layouts, and so forth, we've been able to put together a generic QML file that will give us all of the various context behaviors we need. We're using a set of C++ classes that are derived from QAbstract list model to create a hierarchy of data that is then bound to these QML files. Quite a bit of variation is possible with this technique. Each button is configurable to behave in a particular way as a toggle, a pop-up, a radio button, and so forth. The size of the button grid can be changed. And all of this without coding each layout individually. This brings me to the core reasons why we chose Q. The first reason is efficiency. Software schedules in any industry are always longer than desired. When you add in all the processes we have to follow for regulatory reasons, often the requested delivery date slips away. Qt helps in this by being easy to learn and making very difficult UI development it can be accomplished quickly. The second reason is to meet growing customer expectations. 
Customers are getting more sophisticated every day. Qt offers a wide set of UI features that our customers expect. In addition, Qt Design Viewer and Qt Design Studio give us a way to prototype UI screens and get feedback directly from our users. Qt Design Viewer has a way of bundling up the prototype UI along with sample data and sending it to the customer who can use a web browser to load that prototype UI up and take a look at what you're thinking. This helps us tighten the feedback loop and, and create better UIs for the customer. The third reason to use Qt is maintainability. So given the processes that we must, must follow, maintainability is critical. Each line of, of code written provides value. It is what makes the advanced uses of these medical devices possible, but it also becomes a maintenance burden. The smaller, the better. Implementing the touch panel code in Qt took around 2,900 lines of QML plus approximately 9,000 lines of C++ code. This is a reduction from the almost 20,000 lines of code in the previous implementation. But beyond these raw numbers, there was also a large reduction in complexity. The new code is easier to understand and new team members will be able to come up to speed quickly. In conclusion, I'd like to offer Qt as a good offering for people working in regulated industries and indeed in any industry that needs software. Thank you.